Hey everyone, Sam here from Barn2, and I have a very quick, basically unscripted video for you just to explain how to embed PDFs using the Elementor page builder. Now, like I said, this video is pretty much off the cuff, but if you have a look here at my webpage, I'm gonna show you one method where you can actually embed the entire PDF into the page like this. And that's really good for like single documents if you want to do that. This tip comes from the Web Squadron YouTube channel and they've got a lot of great videos, so you can check them out definitely. And also that method requires no plugins. It just requires a tiny little bit of HTML code, nothing like CSS or anything scary. I'll show you that in just a sec. But down here, I'd also like to bring your attention to this PDF library. So here we have this nice grid layout where you can see all of the different PDFs and they also have a preview option where people can actually view that PDF in a preview and a download option. And you can see I've got images for all of them. So it looks quite nice. You can have a lot more documents in this list. You can list them in this grid layout or in a table layout if you want to using this plugin, which I'll show you in a minute. So let's go back to the first one and show you how it's done. So I'm here in my Elementor page builder and I've just created a page called resources. And then all you have to do is search for embed and you'll see this HTML option, drag and drop that onto the page. Maybe I will, I'll show you down here so you can see what it should look like. And then with your HTML code, you're just going to use this bit of code here, but don't worry, it's not too scary. Um, you're just gonna copy and paste that. But what you also need is to have your PDF uh, URL. So depending on if it's in your media library and you just need to copy the URL from there, or if it's sourced from the web, you can copy it from there as well. So you're just gonna take that here, can copy that and add it in between the quotation marks here and then copy the whole thing. Go back to your page and control V, there we go. Now in the advanced section here, we can play around with the width. So if I want it to be full width or custom width and I can set a percentage, maybe I like it at around two thirds and I can also center it like this. And you can just play around with the width and the height Whoa. so it's not too crazy. So this is a really cool trick from the Web Squadron YouTube channel. Check them out if you want more tips like this. They didn't tell me to make this video, I just wanted to include it because it's relevant to the topic. But now if you wanna make this kind of grid layout, which I've got going here, we can look at how we can do that using our Document Library Pro plugin. This is a very popular plugin of ours. It's used on thousands of different websites and it's very easy to set up. If you wanna test out the plugin before purchasing it, we have an admin demo, which you can try and it'll launch a live site for you using InstaWP so you can test out the plugin that way. Now, if you wanna do that and follow along with this tutorial, you'd also have to install Elementor on that staging site. If, however, you just want to purchase this plugin and add it to your website straight away, then I've got some instructions for you to follow in just a sec. And it does come with a 30-day money-back guarantee as well. So you have time to consider if it's right for you. If you're purchasing Document Library Pro, then follow these steps to install it on your site. After checkout, you'll get an email with the zip file and a product key for activation. In the WordPress admin, go to Plugins, Add New Plugin, and upload the plugin zip file that you just downloaded. Click Install and then Activate. In the Setup Wizard, enter your license key and click Activate. Then skip the other steps and go to the settings page. However, if you don't see the setup wizard, then you can use this link on the plugin page to get to the settings, and then you can enter your license key there. So now that we've installed and activated the plugin, we need to actually add some PDFs as documents because documents are a specific post type in WordPress now that you've installed this plugin. So if I click on all documents, 
you can see here I've already added some PDF files. But one of the easiest ways to add new documents is to go to your media library if you already have some PDFs like I have here. And then you can just select them and then use the bulk actions to add to document library and click apply. And that'll add those to your library. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do it again. Another way you can add PDFs is by using the import feature. So click on documents, import, and then you can just drag the files from your computer and they will be uploaded here. Or you can use the CSV upload option. So you have to create a CSV file with all of the document parameters, including the links or the URLs for those PDFs. And then you can upload that and import all of them at once, which is very handy. Once you've actually added your documents, we're just gonna go in and update a few settings for the plugin to be displaying properly on our website. So go to settings within documents and scroll down, 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 down. And on this default layout, you can switch it from a table layout to a grid layout like you saw on my page. Then you can click on allow users to preview the documents in a light box. Make sure that's checked. Scroll all the way down and click on save changes. Now under the document grid section, you can choose what things will be displayed about your documents. It depends on how much information you've added for each individual document. So right now, these are what will be displayed. You can choose the number of columns, but that may be auto selected based on the size that you have for them on the page. And then you can also select a nice background color and the category background color as well. Maybe you need to change this to match your website. Now the table design generally comes from your website's theme. So that's gonna depend on what you've installed on your own site. Again, click on save changes and then head back to your Elementor page that you're editing. And all you need to do is insert a short code widget Sorry, not, not widget, but you get what I mean. Drag that in, and then the short code you need to display just looks like this, doc underscore library. You can use more specific short codes with a whole bunch of parameters. You can check out our knowledge base to learn all about those different options that you have for this table or grid plugin. And there are a lot of them, so it's worthwhile to take a look and see what your options are. You can also reach out to our support team. If you don't quite know what you need to do, but you have an idea in your head and maybe they can help you accomplish it. I'm just gonna remove this empty block here. And once you have added the short code, it may not display precisely how you want it in the edit screen, but click on update and then click on preview. And here we see the first option I showed you. And then you scroll down and you can see this nice grid layout. It comes with a search box, previewing, and download buttons. If you click on the PDF itself, it'll take you to a separate page for the document, and then you have the same options for downloading and so on. You can disable this if you want to, but it's not really a big deal. Okay, I wanna keep this video nice and short and sweet, so click here to try the admin demo for Document Library Pro, or click on this video to learn more about the plugin and how you can use it on your site. And of course, thanks for watching.